I just realized I just didn't start the recording. Okay, here it is. Um, and so she's actually, she's one of the few people that I'll let actually like do Reiki on me. And I've had sessions with her doing cranial sacral work and somato emotional release work and Reiki and Reiki drumming. And she's just amazing. And I've been to her Kundalini workshops. And so um, she's just, she's super, super knowledgeable and she really like dives into everything that she offers and learns like all about it so that she can offer it to others from really like a a place of like a wealth of knowledge and so I just I trust her and you know trust her to share with you guys um and so that's that's my introduction to her um but her official introduction is So she is a doctor of physical therapy, and she specializes in craniosacral therapy, somato-emotional release, and Reiki energy healing. She's taught yoga since 2002, and she started with alignment-based Hatha yoga, and then now does more of the kundalini yoga, which she will talk about. She believes in treating holistically and looking at the emotional and energetic bodies when addressing physical pain, and she empowers people to take their health back into their own hands. She teaches workshops and retreats internationally and offers remote healing sessions as well as in-person sessions in San Diego and Hawaii. And she currently lives in Kauai and creates personalized yoga videos for clients and is the founder of yogadoctors.tv which she will share a little bit about and then I will post a link to check out all of her offerings right after the class so yeah welcome summer you can take it from here thank you thank you for that Sarah and I just wanted to add that we taught um co-taught a class together oh yes I totally left that out I was like that we're, <laughs> yeah we did which, trades and all that which was so awesome but yeah we co, co-taught that workshop <laughs> yeah we co-taught a workshop and it was really amazing because half the people would be doing kundalini and then half the group were doing intuitive readings with Sarah and then we would switch and um I still to this day get fe- really great feedback about that retreat that they, like, I do too and, yeah I, I like all I, I know we should because like I ran into Joel somewhere and he and he came through you he didn't had no idea who I was oh yeah and he was, <laughs> he was like that day was just so amazing like it changed my life and he's like I didn't even believe in psychics until that and it was like yeah. but he said <laughs> having both of us was like incredible and like George and a few people so I know maybe yeah. we should do it again <laughs> yeah well thank you for that introduction um Hi, everybody. Uh, You can just call me Summer. It's totally fine. And um, so Sarah was sharing with me, I know this whole eight-week program is about tapping into your intuition. And, um, you know, I've I've really taught yoga for like, I think it's like 17 plus years. But when I came across Kundalini yoga specifically, Kundalini yoga um, is, you can think of it as like yoga for the energy body. And so I know you're talking with Sarah a bit about chakras right and and energy centers in the body and um, kundalini yoga is specifically yoga for the energy body Um, it's also known as the yoga of awareness Um, i always say it's like the yoga of transformation because it's very quick and it's very powerful and um, the uh, yogi bhajan who is the man who brought it over from the east he brought kundalini yoga to the west over in like the late 60s Um, the style of yoga was like basically only taught to like royalty or like high, like in that higher up class people. And Yogi Bhajan just didn't think that was right. He thought everybody should have this information. And he really predicted um, back then, it was like in the late 60s, I believe, he predicted that during this time that we're in now, that we would just need a different type of um, practice to be able to handle the amount of stimulus that is coming at us. Um, the amount of, uh, of overstimulation that we get like to our nervous system just from our modern day, you know, highly technological society that we would just need a different practice and that that is Kundalini Yoga. And so the, it, it's also known as the science of angles because the direct, uh, the angle of your arms or your legs directs blood flow and um, energy or prana to specific organs, glands or, or energy centers in the body. Um, there's like thousands of, of Kundalini yoga kriyas and a kriya is like 
a, a set of exercises used to produce a specific energetic effect. And so when Sarah was asking me to teach, I was like, oh, this is, there's so many um, kriyas and meditations in Kundalini that are really specific to uh, helping you develop intuition. And so um, I'm going to take you guys through uh, this, this kriya that is, I think it's four, one, two, three, four, four, um, four exercises only. And um, I'm going to give you a little shavasana, and then I'm going to give you a, a meditation at the end. And and I'm just going to speak a little bit to to the actual ajna chakra, which is what this kriya and this meditation is is for, is for, for honing in on that chakra. And so so your third eye chakra, right, is directly. Uh, connected to your pituitary gland and your pituitary gland is like a little pea sized shape um, gland that sits in the middle of the brain and <clears throat> and it's directly linked to your autonomic nervous system which is um, your sympathetic nervous system and your parasympathetic nervous system so some of you um, may or may not um, have heard of your uh, HPA axis does that sound familiar to anybody no? Okay. So, yep. Yeah, okay. So, um, hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal axis. And so this is, um, an axis that they talk about quite a bit when you're speaking to like adrenal fatigue and like what's going on, like hormonally in the body. And so the pituitary gland is basically directed by the hypothalamus and it, it kind of tells how, how much, um, to secrete or how much to inhibit secretion of hormones. And then the pituitary gland is considered like the master gland in the body. And the master gland of the body um, tells all of the other glands what to do and how much to secrete. And so <clears throat> the, um, the pituitary gland sends signals to um, like your adrenals, your, um, your, which is in charge of your cortisol, right? That your, um, your stress hormone, it sends signals to, um, your thymus gland, which is directly connected to your immunity. Um, it sends signals to your, the reproductive organs, to the testes, to the ovaries. And so it's, it's this master gland that tells all of the other glands what to do. And so um, in, in Kundalini, it's very much about like directing energy and directing blood flow to, um, you could say the pituitary gland, which is the gland that is governed by the, the Ajna chakra, the third eye chakra. Um, the, the secretions of the, of the pituitary gland are also called like the, the molecules of emotion or the, the molecules of um, knowledge. And it's said to be very connected to the limbic system. And the limbic system is, um, it's like one of the three major parts of your brain, but it's basically like your feeling brain, right? So the um, brain, the part of your brain that has to do with emotions and how you feel. And so, um, you know, really, the, the, I like to just say this off the bat, is like the, the most significant aspect of your intuition in general is to give you the ability, to help you develop the ability to um, make decisions and to see from soul versus from your ego. So to see from a place of the, enti from the, the entirety of your being versus like this narrow, you know, kind of myopic um, ego-based um, place. And so that's really like the, the, um, the reason, <laughs> like why you would even want to work on your intuition, right? It's, it's, it's all about your ability to see, um, your ability to perceive um, what's really true, you know, past the illusion of, of, you know, things past the illusion of the ego and for you to be able to really to see and pick up on what is actually true. So you can make decisions from that place. Okay, I feel like I was just talking a lot. Is that, is that, make, is that making sense? Okay, okay. So, um, and uh, Matt, you said you had done Kundalini before? No, no Kundalini, okay. And then anybody else? No, okay, all right. So I'm gonna take you guys through this, uh, this Kriya. Let me just see if there's anything else I wanted to mention. Nope, that's good, okay. Okay, so the, the Kriya I'm going to take you guys through is called the Kriya for Becoming Crystal Clear, okay? And I wanted to choose a fairly simple one um, so that, uh, you know, you can see how kind of like quick and powerful it is. I'm going to take you through the Kriya, which is about um, 25 minutes, and I'll give you a short Shavasana, and then we'll, we'll sit up and do a, a meditation, and I'll explain the meditation as we get there, but it's also directed toward... Um, brain balancing and, and intuition. 
Okay, are you guys ready? Okay, all right. So um, the, the other thing about Kundalini is that a, a head covering is recommended. Um, it's not required, but it's highly recommended. And the reason being is that um, to cover the crown and it's said to help ground and contain energy. And you'll notice that during the practice too, your eyes will be closed, focus on the third eye the majority of the time. Um, and that's to keep the focus inward and also to help contain energy. Um, but the, the head covering is for, is for containment of the energy and to help with grounding um, because some of these kriyas can be uh, very elevating, <laughs> very activating. And, um, and so it, does, it doesn't have to be anything special. It can be a hat, it can be a bandana, whatever you want. Um, if you decide to like continue this practice on a regular basis, especially if you're a sensitive one and you know, you're sensitive to energy, which I would just assume you guys signing up with this course with um, Sarah, <laughs> that you are that way. So um, I, I would highly recommend it. It's, it's said to help uh, reduce distracting thoughts and help you connect to, to your own intuition. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So you're going to find just a comfortable seated position. Okay, and, and what I would like you to have is your, your knees lower than your hips. So cross-legged position. Mm -hmm. Yep, on the ground if you, if you can. <laughs> and sitting on you know, a blanket or a pillow or whatever, you can do it in a chair too. Um, but seeing that your knees are a little bit lower than your hips. And then just rest your palms facing up right on your knees. And then just close your eyes. Ground each of your sitting bones so you uh, anchor your, the bottom of your pelvis. And then from that anchoring, get a little bit taller through the crown of your head and uh, through the heart. And just begin to breathe long and deep in and out your nose here. And just take the next minute or so to gather any distracted uh, or scattered parts of yourself just into your physical body now. And as you continue, continue to breathe here, just in and out your nose, I want you to just feel and sense um, like the middle of your brain. So how does your inside of your head feel? Does it feel hot, uh, foggy? Um, does it feel congested? Does it feel open? Just tuning in to how you actually feel in this particular energy center in the body. And then keeping your eyes closed, just bring your hands into a prayer mudra at the heart. Push your thumbs in and up at the sternum so it lifts your heart a little bit more. And then just steady your inner gaze, just in and up between the eyebrows right at the third eye point. And we'll begin here in the, in the tradition of Kundalini Yoga with the Adi Mantra. So the Adi Mantra is Ong, O-N-G, Namo, Guru Dev Namo. Ong Namo Guru Dev Namo. It really just means um, I'm calling upon my inner, my inner wisdom, uh, my inner teacher, the part of me that uh, knows what I need, the part of me that moves me from darkness to light. 
as well as connecting to just the lineage of teachers and all of the masters and great ones that have come before us to help guide our practice. So Ong Namo Guru Dev Namo. So we'll chant this three times through together. So please take a moment and clear your throat. <coughs> Good, and then take a deep belly breath in. Ong Namo Guru Dev Namo. Inhale. Om Namo Guru Dev Namo. Inhale. Om Namo Guru Dev Namo. And now take a deep breath in, pause your breath, and then lift mula bonds. So you're gonna squeeze the rectum, sex organs, and navel up and in, and then just draw energy from the root to the crown. Steady your gaze at the third eye. Hold your breath here. And exhale your air, rest your palms up on your knees, keep your eyes at the third eye point and just breathe, breathe and feel. Long deep breaths in and out your nose. And Kundalini Yoga is very much about tuning into the subtle. So tuning into just the subtle energetic shifts that happen uh, even between the exercises. Just take a few more breaths here together. Good. And then from here, you're gonna bring your hands just like so in front of the heart. Okay, and this is gonna be alternating your arms. Okay, so you're gonna Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. And it's almost like you, as if you were gonna slap the chest, but I want you to stop about six inches in front of your chest. Okay, so start this with me, left arm out, and then exhale in. Inhale, right arm out, exhale in, that's it. That's it, now go at your own pace, and what will happen is that you'll automatically develop this breath of fire. Breath of fire is just a pumping of the navel point, so as you exhale, see that the navel draws back towards the spine. Okay, and then close the eyes, roll the inner gaze in and up to the third eye point again, and just visualize yourself gathering energy to the heart center. So it's a powerful motion here with the hands. Good, keep going. And remember, it's as if you were about to beat your chest and you're just stopping just short of the chest. So really drawing energy towards the heart here. Make your breath powerful in and out your nose. Keep the heart lifted. Keep the shoulder blades down the back. 
and see that your hands are just in front of the heart level. And keep your breath strong in and out your nose, the navel pulling back on the exhale. And breath of fire helps to stimulate about 72,000 energy channels you have at the navel point. And this is also just directing energy up towards the heart center, which is really where your seat of intuition begins. So keep going, guys, just another 20 seconds or so. One more on each side, and then inhale your hands just six inches or so in front of the heart. Deep breath in. Now pause the breath in, and then again, lift Mulaban. So you're gonna lift the pelvic floor, draw the navel up and in, and then just visualize energy spiraling around the spine counterclockwise up towards the crown. Hold. And exhale, rest your palms up on your knees, keep your eyes closed, steady your gaze at the third eye, and just take a moment to breathe and feel. Good, take a couple more breaths here. Good, okay. Now bring your arms like so, so 90 degrees with your elbows. Okay, your palms are facing each other, okay? And then your elbows, uh, the upper arms parallel to the ground, okay? So the inhale position is here, kind of like cactus arms. And then as if you were gonna clap your hands together, you're gonna exhale and then just stop just short of your hands touching, okay? So it's just like that, okay? So inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. So it's not quite a breath of fire, but just coordinate your, move, your breath with the movement. Close your eyes, roll them again in and up to the third eye point. And just have a gentle um, awareness of the core so that your foundation's solid as your arms go back and forth. Good, and just tapping into the awareness that you're 99.99999% .99 energy and just using this motion to just clear any um, chaotic energy, any brain fog, um, any energy that even isn't yours that is surrounding your head, is surrounding your brain and even around the heart. So just look at it as like a clearing movement. Steady your inner gaze right at the third eye. Good, now inhale your arms right in front of you. Deep breath in. Good, pause the breath, and then same thing. Again, lift Mulaban, so from the pelvic floor and the navel, lift up, stretch through the crown of the head, hold your breath here. Good, and exhale your air. Rest your palms up on your knees, sit tall, just breathe and feel for a moment.
Take two more deep breaths. Good, now take your hands like so, and then you're gonna just bounce, like you're bouncing a ball against the floor, and you're gonna do that same breath of fire. So that inhale and exhale through the nose, pumping the navel point in and out, time the exhale by the navel drawing up and in. Okay, so big inhale, we'll begin together. Take a deep breath in, pause the breath, again lift from the pelvic floor and the navel up towards the crown, hold. And exhale your air, rest your palms up again, sit tall, just breathe and feel for a moment. Good, take a deep breath in together. And full, complete exhale. Good, guys. Okay, so the, the last uh, active part of this is actually bringing energy um, all the way to the back to the navel point. So this is that area where you're activating those 72,000 energetic channels. It helps with centering, it helps with grounding, okay? So um, I'm gonna just speak it first and then I'll show it to you. So it's just about, um, it's lying on your back. You're gonna be pressing your palms pretty firmly into onto the navel, okay? And then your the legs are traditionally both legs are lifted six inches off the ground. That's challenging, okay? That's like a pretty advanced core exercise, right? So please feel free. I always will modify and like you can just do one leg at a time and just you're just breathing in and out here. It's no um, breath of fire. Just inhale and exhale through the nose. Long deep breathing, okay? And um, I'll just tell you right up front, we're going for just over three minutes, okay? So I want you to pace yourself. And if you ever need to just totally rest, you just rest, you stay with the breath. And in Kundalini, you just visualize your, your legs still doing the motion, okay? Because still the same neurosynapses happen whether you're visualizing it or whether you're doing it, okay? So do the best you can. Let me show it to you. Pressing your palms into the navel, okay? And then <clears throat> engage your core. And so traditionally it would be here. Again, that's very hard. So please feel free to do this one leg at a time. Maybe five to ten breaths or so on each side and just switch back and forth as you, as you need to. Got it? Okay. Okay. So go ahead and lay down. If you can, angle your your um, computer so I can see you in case I need to give you guys any little um, verbal adjustments. <laughs> yeah. Good. Okay. Perfect. All right. So you can choose if you want to try both legs. If you're used to doing core work, of course you can try both legs. Um, if not, do one leg at a time. Take both hands, press firmly into the navel. Okay, press hard. Okay, now lift one or both legs six inches off the floor. I'm gonna go ahead and start the timer here. Close your eyes and then roll your inner gaze, inner gaze in and up between the eyebrows. Okay, long deep breathing in and out your nose.
Good. Keep going. If you try both legs and you feel your lower back come way off the ground, please just do one leg at a time. That's totally fine. You just build your strength that way. And then Kundalini, it's, it's talked about often that when we activate the, the navel point, um, where all these energy centers, all these nadis across, that it, it not only helps us be more centered and more grounded, but it also will help the mind be more intuitive, more neutral, um, and more expansive at the same time. Good, you guys are doing great. Almost halfway there. That's it, last minute. Good, pressing your hands firmly into the navel. Yogi Bhajan says in this one, uh, think of yourself as a divine being, you know, really see yourself as um, a powerful being that has the ability to direct your energy so that it has a, a beneficial effect to the entire system. Last 10 seconds. Good guys. Okay, inhale, lift one or both legs, and then pause the breath. Lift the pelvic floor, draw the navel up and in, hold it here. Five, four, three, two, one. And then exhale, totally relax. Rest your palms up. I'm going to give you a, uh, about a seven minute shavasana here. And imagine that your body is filled with light. Focus your attention on the navel point where you've just cultivated all that energy. Good. And as you just gently inhale into the navel, where you just activated all that energy, as you exhale, just see it spread in all directions of the body, going into all of your cells, inhaling into the navel, and exhaling, seeing it just spread in all directions.
Just gently begin to deepen your breaths. And 
And just bring some form of movement into your body so you can just wiggle the fingers and the toes. And as you feel ready, rub the palms together, create some heat. Bend your knees, rub the bottoms of your feet together as well. Just waking up the nerve endings in your physical body. Yep, just rub the bottoms of the feet together. Yep, just separate your knees, put the bottoms of your feet together, rub them, that's it. <laughs> create a little bit of heat. Fast, go fast, yep. And then as you're ready, take a deep breath in and out. And then just roll all the way onto your right side. Yep, and just take a few breaths there on the right side. This is just your transition point. This is um, just like the fetal position. This is your position of rebirth at the end of every yoga practice. So you allow everything you did to just die. Let your he legs be heavy. Let your organs relax. Let your abdominal muscles relax. And as you're ready, you're just gonna press yourself up with your hands and then come into a meditation position. So just a cross-legged position if you can. Um, sit on your cushion or block, um, a chair, whatever you need to get your knees lower than your hips. Okay, and then just rest for a moment with your palms up on your knees and just take a few breaths here in and out your nose, just allow all of your energy to ground down through your seat, through the bottom of your pelvis. Go ahead and just take another breath or two here. Okay, and then we're coming into this meditation. The meditation is called uh, the Tattva, ba Tattva Balance Beyond Stress and Duality. Um, I don't call it that on my website. <laughs> I've actually filmed this, um, this meditation for my site. I call it meditation for um, intuition, brain balancing, and for stress relief, because that's really what it is. Um, it's about bringing the elements in the body into balance. It's about bringing the two hemispheres of the brain into balance and um, connecting one to the intuition. And so it's about really like reducing your own reaction to stress. And, and Sarah was telling me a lot of you were going through some challenging stuff at the moment. And so this is a great meditation to do. You can do it as short as three minutes. You can do it up to 11 minutes. Um, it would be a great one to do as like a 40 day sadhana if this was something that you really wanted to work on. Um, so the, the fingers, the mudra, it looks like this. So you're going to press all of the fingers together, and it's fairly firm, pressing the hands together. Yep, and it's just right in front of the heart, and the thumb is, is facing the torso. Yep, and then press firm. The, the forearms here are par parallel to the ground. And the, the eye focus here is like one-tenth open, gazing at the tip of the nose. So you can try that to see what that feels like for you. If that seems like it's just challenging, um, because it, it was for me at first, for sure, I'll just close my eyes, but then still um, do my inner gaze uh, looking at the tip of my nose. And what it does is that it uh, activates your optic nerve, which stimulates the pituitary gland. Okay, so do the best you can with that. One tenth open staring at the tip of the nose or just close the eyes and then inner gaze towards the tip of the nose. Okay. And so from here, we'll start this together. I want you to take a deep inhalation through your nose. And then eight equal strokes, uh, rounded lips through your mouth. So, and then inhale long and deep through your nose. Good, round lips, eight equal strokes. Pull the navel in with each exhale. Inhale long and deep through your nose. Good, and then as you exhale, eight equal strokes. Good, and just continue on at your own pace. Deep inhale through your nose. The exhale is eight equal strokes through rounded lips through your mouth, pulling the navel in with each exhale. Okay, this exhale helps stimulate your parasympathetic nervous system, that 
part of the nervous system that will help you rest and repair. So just continue on at your own pace here. Keep a steady focus towards the tip of your nose. Good guys, keep going. Remember to keep firm pressure at that last joint of your fingers and your thumbs. Good, keep going, last minute. Keep the hands at heart level. Couple more rounds. So I'm helping to bring balance between the two hemispheres of the brain so that um, if you get confused, it can help bring you to a state of clarity so you can make um, good decisions. Okay, good guys, after that last uh, eight strokes of your exhale, we're gonna take a deep inhalation through your nose and then hold it here for 15 seconds. So I'll let you know when that is, hold. Good, exhale, keep the mudra. Take a deep inhalation. Good, now exhale, shake your hands out. 
Good, really fast, shake your hips. Yep, that's it. Good. And then just rest your palms up, close your eyes, gaze at the third eye here and just take a moment. Breathe and feel. And just tuning into the sensation around the middle of the brain here, just as you did in the beginning, surround the energy center of the third eye point and just notice any differences, tuning into any little subtle uh, energetic changes that you feel. And if you're not live and you're watching this um, later, please feel free to stay here in a seated meditation for longer if you'd like. Okay, we'll just bring our hands into a prayer position to end. So pressing the thumbs again in and up at the heart, gazes at the third eye, and we'll end with one long sat, short nam. Sat means truth, nam means identity. So you can think of it as like calling upon uh, the highest truth within yourself. So deep breath in. Sat Nam. And just gently bow your head towards your heart. Take a moment, give yourself some credit for showing up, for doing your work, for helping to clear out your own system and contribute to this elevation of this collective consciousness. And as you're ready, bring your thumbs to the third eye point and just gently bow your head. Namaste. Yay, that was so awesome. Good. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Let me know if anybody has any questions about it while, while I'm here. I actually have one question. Yeah. The one like this, the second one, yeah. could you do that to help relieve like a headache or a migraine? Do you think? Ooh, it would be worth trying actually. Yeah. Like, I, like it's so funny. Like I've had like this kind of like, like a low level headache all day. Yeah. On and off and and now it's totally gone, like after doing yeah. all that. But that's awesome. Yeah, actually it would be worth there's other there's some specific stuff in Kundalini that is for headaches. Okay. Um I haven't seen that one specifically for headaches, but I could see why it would help. Yeah. Yeah, because it just felt like it just cleared like I literally felt it like clearing all the energy just like out. So it was so Yeah, that's what's really good about it. Like whenever you're doing, you know, even with this one. You're like clearing energy around the heart, which is your biggest, biggest electromagnetic field. And then this one, you're clearing energy around the head um, and around the brain even. So anytime I'm doing those movements with my arms, I just imagine just like clearing away, literally like wiping away, um, you know, any energy that you may have collected from other people, you know, that's not yours um, mm -hmm. or like anything that's no longer serving you, you know, just from your day. That you, and that's what's so good about, uh, powerful about this practice to do on a regular basis because obviously the energy is different every day, right? Like just mm -hmm. on the planet <laughs> dealing with every day uh, is different. And so there's literally a Kriya for everything. <laughs> it's like, mm -hmm. name it. There's like a Kriya for it, like anger, 
grounding, digestion, you know, heart opening, intuition, like there's just a degree of everything. So it's a really um, a beautiful way to just sort of like my, my motto you'll see on my website um, is be your own medicine. And it's literally a way for you to like be your own healer. You know, it's like a way for you to um, manage your own energy without having, you know, the, the need to, to have someone else go and like clear your energy for you. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> and the, um, and the way I have yoga doctors.tv, my website is set up, is set up um, for the six most common ailments that people suffer from. And then the, uh, the modalities of, of Kundalini yoga and meditation, breath work and mantra. Um, and there's even Hatha yoga practices on there are just funneled into those um, common ailments. And you can like filter the classes if you only have five or 10 minutes. Um, if you're a beginner, you know, whatever ailment you want to work on, anxiety and stress, um, there's a whole category for developing intuition is one of the, um, is one of the, the categories. Because um, when I sent the survey out trying to find the six most common ailments for people, one of them was lack of clarity and just feeling like confused. And so there's a whole category on there just of, um, geared towards uh, breathwork, mantra, and, and kriya, kriyas that are specifically for um, helping you develop intuition. So um, we'll give you guys a link for that and, and um, there's a way to check it out for, you can check it out for a couple weeks for a dollar and there's also a free gift on there too. So. Awesome. Which yeah, just for everyone, I mean like live and then on the replay like that, like so, I mean yeah, because like I just felt the the energy clear from this work. So, I mean, which I talk about with them all the time is how sensitive people, like we pick up other people's stuff. And so, you know, that's huge. And a lot of people took this class um, with the intention of, of getting clarity in their decisions and, you know, and accessing that. So like, it's so awesome that that you know, like I just, which is, this is the whole reason I had you here <laughs> because it just totally goes and it's such a great resource. So, yeah. And I have to say like, um, you know, whenever I, I, I went and did like, and in, I went to India and did this month long Kundalini yoga teacher training. And whenever I came back and I was living in Encinitas, California at the time, which um, if any of you guys know, are I don't know if any of you guys are there, but I know it's where Sarah lives too. You just see everybody like, I mean, in all towns are like this, but a lot of towns are like this where you just you go out and you see a lot of people in cafes and restaurants and and I just remember specifically for myself like being someone that was really sensitive and I was seeing clients a lot and I was overworked and I was stressed and um, I would like take on you know other people's energy and I would specifically avoid people um, you know in certain uh, places to not have to like deal with their energy basically and the number one thing I can tell you guys when I got back from India from doing this training and doing like 21 days straight of Kriya meditation was that I felt this like this strengthening of my nervous system that um, helped basically just help me deal with stress better and I, I can remember like running into several of those people that I would have typically avoided and I could just stand there like just you know stand my own ground and my own power and like it was just like I was unaffected and, um, and the, the eighth chakra in Kundalini yoga is the aura, your auric field. And so that's the electromagnetic field that surrounds all of us, you know, nine to 14 feet in all directions. And it's like this invisible shield that when it's actually really strong and when it's charged, which is what Kundalini yoga does, it, um, and it's also the auric field is like an extension of your nervous system. It helps you deal with stress better. And, um, and so it's, it's, it's Kundalini yoga is also called like the householder's yoga because it's literally meant for, um, you know, busy people, um, stressed out people that if you only have three minutes, like five minutes, like there's stuff you can do, you know, in three or five minutes that just will change your energetic state. Um, and so that's what it's for. And so that's why I'm really passionate about sharing it because it's just really quick and it's really powerful. Yeah. Does anybody else have any questions? Feel free. <laughs> Comments? No, I don't, I don't have any questions, but one of the things that I felt kind of towards the end was an overwhelming urge to just smile, right? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that's like happiness or, you know, I, you, you get that same elation when you've done something really, really, really good. Like just, yeah. and I, that's never happened in the kind of this scenario before. So I don't know what you did or what we did, but thank you. That was incredible. 
Oh, that's awesome. That's so beautiful to hear that. And um, yeah, the, this style of yoga is, is really about like balancing your own energy system. So it brings you back to a state of, of peacefulness, of, um, you know, contentment. And, and um, it, like in Kundalini, they say happy, healthy, and holy, you know, so that you, you can actually like radiate, you can, you can deal with your own energy and balance your own energy system and then therefore radiate, you know, um, what you feel, the good energy that you feel out to other people. And um, yeah, that's beautiful. Thanks for sharing that, Matt. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that is awesome. I felt, I caught myself sitting there too, like in some of the breaks and I was just like smiling. I just felt like this ease. I'm like, oh. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I mean, I haven't ever found any, I've, I literally have studied every style of yoga <laughs> over these like 17 years and there's nothing that works quite as quickly and, and it's like efficiently um, and powerfully as Kundalini that will that can help change your energy state and kind of bring you to that sense of just like being in your heart and being in your power and being able to move from that place, you know, rather than, because we are, every one of us I think is, is in this day and age having to strengthen our own nervous system. And this is a practice to help you do that so that you can deal with stress and, and operate from, um, from having an experience of your soul. You know, Yogi Bhajan said this style of yoga is to, specifically to give you an experience of your soul. And so that's beautiful that you caught that map because that's literally what it does. It just kind of like lights, lights you up from the inside out. It's what originally kept me going back to, to Kundalini. Whenever I, I first found it, I thought it was like, this is really different and kind of weird. I wasn't really sure about it. And then I just felt so good after every class that I just like kept going back, kept going back um, until I was just sold. I was like, well, I feel so good after every class, like no matter what weird stuff they made me do, I don't even care. <laughs> like, and so it made me want to study it more. So awesome. I'm glad yeah, that and I think, and that, and you know, Sarah, you know this, every time for some reason, whenever I meditate with you, I vanish. I was present the entire time, nice. um, which I know, summary, I don't know if you fully appreciate that, but Sarah, you do. It was, I was very grounded and very present the whole time. Yeah. It was pretty great. And I think that's what, because you're like, you're working, like you're in your breath and it brings you, I think Matt, it, like knowing you and your process, like, I think it would be so powerful for you because it like, it, it forces you to like stay in your body. Yes. So, yeah, so you don't go wander. <laughs> You're not out on the galaxies. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. And it's like, because the, with Kundalini, there's like any combination of breath work, mantra, uh, mudra, and where you're focusing your eyes. It's like, you can't really be doing anything else <laughs> except for the practice. <laughs> and so that's why I find it really good for beginners too, is because you um, it gives you enough to do that it, you stay with it. And um, I think that's actually a really common um, thing, Matt, that I've heard from a lot of students actually that, and it, and it typically can come from like a, a childhood pattern of mentally checking out or, you know, dissociating from the body. And I think all of us to some degree have done that, you know, as children and, and as adults where because we have so much technology that's directing our attention outward and wherever your attention goes, your energy goes right? So your energy, our energy is constantly out of the body a lot of the day. And so that's why it's a really balancing practice um, just in our kind of like modern day society to help you just stay in the body. And, um, and it, it is also is what's really good for the nervous system is to stay and like um, feeling like what feels good in your body, right? Like versus what feels bad or focusing on the negative. So yeah, that's really good awareness. <laughs> Um, I have a technical question because I know a couple people are going to be wondering this that will watch the replay. Is mm -hmm. on your um, Yoga Doctors TV, can they watch that on their phone? Yep. Okay. Yep. Like if they you just to log in and, and uh, you can be on the phone, iPad, or computer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know that's probably going to come up. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else have anything? Okay. Well, yeah. Well, I, so I added Summer to our private group so that you guys can all like stay in touch with her, ask her any questions, book sessions with her, you know, whatever, um, whatever that looks like for you. And then, you know, I just want to like invite everyone to just, um, so that she can see and I can see, and we can all share with each other. Like if you, 
watch this replay and like if you do it a few times or even just once and you're just on the replay like comment your experience or comment any questions like just so we can you know uh, address those and um hear any feedback and then i'm also going to post a link to for her yoga doctors tv website so that you can go try it out for the what is it it's a dollar you can try it out for a dollar for a couple of weeks okay. and then um if you wanted to continue after that it uh it rolls into 22 dollars a month which is like it's like the price of one yoga class and there's almost 100 videos on there yeah yeah so i mean super <laughs> super you know affordable for how beneficial it is i mean it's like amazing yeah so. and i'm just like so excited to get like get it out there because it's literally like what's helped me <laughs> the yeah. very most and and i i utilize the kriyas and i utilize the meditations for clients that i see for healing sessions as well when they're going through like something really specific i'll you know give them a, a specific meditation to do for 40 days and so like that meditation we did you know if you're working on building your capacity for stress and working on strengthening that parasympathetic side of your nervous system that meditation that we did would be a really good one it's three minutes literally you could do it for three minutes for 40 days and it would be a really good one to help um, just build your capacity and help balance the hemispheres of your brain help build clarity and all that stuff so i wanted to um give you guys that one because it kind of works at a couple of different levels that specific meditation um and it's as short as three minutes for so for some of you that are super busy just get up let, let that be the first thing that you do tune in with the adi mantra like we did at the beginning of the kriya and then just go right into you know you can do three to 11 minutes of that of that meditation and um i can't recommend the 40 day the 40 day practices enough that um in kundalini they say if you do something for 40 days it will help break you of any negative habits that might be blocking your expansion and so anytime i've done 40 day um, meditations or kriyas or whatever, it's, it's quite an experience in and of itself. When you have a really specific intention you're focusing on for 40 days, it's, it's kind of incredible like what comes into your energy field because of your intention for those 40 days. So I really recommend that. So if anybody has any questions about that, that come up um, even later, please feel free to um, contact me on Facebook. It's just under Summer Nicole or my email is summer, S-O-M-E-R at, um, at yoga doctors. Dot TV. Awesome. I'm just going to. I try to pull a card every video, so I'm gonna. Oh, cool! Yay! Yeah. Pull that, the Ascended Master. So, um, just for everyone. Oh, nurture yourself, Mother Mary. Nice. She's, she's one of my guys. I always call her in. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, there you go. She's like, I'm here. <laughs> so cool. Well, yay. Well, thank you, Summer, again. Thank you for having me. I hope this is helpful for you guys. Yeah. Thanks, guys, for jumping on. And yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure everyone that watches the replay will connect with you too. So. All right. Good. Yeah. All right, well, I'll see the rest of you tomorrow, and Summer, I'll talk to you sometime soon. Okay, guys. Aloha. Bye. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks. <laughs>